Now, let's go over here, folks, real quick. We're going to go type in and the URL bar, ord-oracle.com. Now, Tim Ord comes on the show every Tuesday and Thursday. Of course, we had him on yesterday, uh, but it's actually nice to have him on today because, of course, we have some pretty interesting movements in gold, at least. And then again, uh, you can go over to tfnn.com, go to the services tab. We have two fantastic webinars uh, from Tim Orr. That is the secret science of market tops and then the six secret ratios every trader should know. Those are for a fantastic price of $149. And again, you can watch these things over and over and over again and really learn how Tim uh, kind of approaches chart making. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. So we talk again. So I, I'm, I'm happy to. Recess and we're back at it. That's right. So. And like I was saying with gold, I think there's some interesting stuff to look at today, but I'm curious to hear what you have to say overall. So I got the charts up for you right now. All right. It's just kind of a repeat from yesterday. Yeah. We were looking at, um, anyhow, just bringing you up to speed, uh, the first chart uh, is the uh, 2020 election where Trump was a candidate and Biden. And uh, anyhow, I have a, a shaded area there in pink and uh, and I got well, two red lines there, basically the second red lines that going into the November election of 2020. And, uh, and, uh, and the top window is the RSI for the SPX tilt ratio. And so that ratio uh, is actually important. Uh, uh, the RSI got down to around the 30 area. And every time that has happened, it actually gives a better signal uh, hang on for one second. Uh, let me. That is not TFNN calling him, folks. Yeah, and again, if you <laughs> missed it. <laughs> but, anyhow, but anyhow, every time the RSI gets around 30 of that ratio, a bottom in the market is near. Uh, a lot of times uh, it gets within usually a day or so of the low, but it shows uh, the uh, uh, tilt, which is a bond market, going down a, a high percentage compared to what the SPX is doing, and that's a sign of panic, and panic only forms at bottoms, and that's the reason why that ratio works. So I'm measuring the equity market compared to the um, uh, bond market. So anyhow, it works pretty well. Uh, for The bottom window is the 10-day average of the trend, and I always said, if you don't have panic in the market, there's uh, you're not at a low, and for some reason, the 2016-2020 lows did not show the 10-day trend getting up around 1.2. I don't know why, but it's it's kind of an anomaly, I guess, because this only happens every four years. But it, the uh, trend did not show panic, but the SPX tilt ratio, RSI, did show panic. I so I flipped to chart two. Yeah. Um, uh, this is a uh, election again. Trump's candidate, Clinton's this time. Uh, the other candidate, and same thing happened. The RSI goes back down to 30 on the SPX ratio, and the bottom window, which is the 10-day trend, did not get into uh, the bullish territory up around 1.2. So I was looking for indicators that gave the signal um, when the bottom occurred for the election. So it, it does appear the SPX tilt RSI ratio uh Will we'll, uh, most likely will give the signal, so that's what I'm be looking for. So, what's going to happen between now and the election? So, let's take a look at that. Which yes. is, uh, or actually, the next chart's the current situation we're in right now, which is uh, this ratio again. And we did just recently uh, get an RSI reading above 70. We had I think 82 on Monday. We've since backed off. But ultimately, I expect this RSI to get around 30 somewhere probably end of this month or at latest first of, of November, November 5th is election. And um, I'm thinking we may, previously I thought we may get down to the, I think it was uh, October 8th low. There's a gap there. I did a little bit more work on it. And there's another gap actually lower comes in. I uh, forget exactly what date it was. Well, it's, it's, it's around uh, September. It's actually, it was September 19th. There's the gap there. And I, I got it shaded, uh, and I got a gap right next to that shaded area. I'm looking at the SP, SPX um, 
right now. And it's also that gap comes at the previous highs of August and the previous high of July, which is around that 560 area uh, or 5600 on the SPX. And I think that's probably a more lightly target. Previously had uh, uh, 5650 area. I think we'll actually get down to 56 area. Okay. Uh, so that, that's a potential area. Uh, that's an ideal place for the RSI to get around 30 in that vicinity. Uh, so and I'll be doing some volume analysis as we approach that. So, But that's a possible downside target in of October, 1st November, around the 5600 on the SPX. So let's see how it works. I didn't attempt to play the long here over the last couple of weeks because a lot of times you go into these big elections. Right. Where it's basically a big news event the market gets kind of wonky uh, sometimes it gets kind of unpredictable so I didn't play the long side uh, but it actually if I did play the long side it worked out all right but, but um, sometimes uh, I looked at previously sometimes the get moves are just a little bit bizarre so I didn't play right. the long side but anyhow I am aligning putting quite a bit of energy to find the next low so um, it should it should work out. Uh, we got not too much time here left. Yeah, well, we can move over to the VIX quickly. You just kind of talk about it. But what, what I do really want right. to say is like that does that does make sense. And I think there have also been really some super unique factors, you know, beyond just kind of, you know, how America usually operates on this. I mean, you have a lot of capital flight coming from outside of the country. Uh, that's kind of unique during this time. Uh, so I definitely see what you're saying. And, and traditionally, yes, like wonky time to be uh, going long in the market, right. at least. But Tim, stay right there. We'll be right back, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after this break. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. 
Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I am joined by Tim Ord right now, the Ord Oracle. Tim, before we went to the break, uh, we we're just about to get to chart four, looking at the VIX. Uh, all right. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can. You sound great. All right. Good. Uh, oh, yeah. Chart uh, four. Uh, this is the VIX. Uh, we kind of went over it uh, yesterday, and this is kind of a repeat. Shows you this last rally up from uh, early October to where we are right now. If you notice, uh, uh, the top window is the SPX ratio. The SPs made higher highs. That ratio made lower highs. And normally, when that happens, you get a pullback at some point, and that's probably what's going to happen here. So, and I got that red trend line uh, was the bottom one was the SPY and I have a red trend line dotted trend line going across the chart right around that uh, 560 area which is where that gap lies which is where the previous high is. so there's a lot of information there to suggest that could turn into a low um, where it gets there or not I uh, don't know but most likely it probably will and if it does and the SPX or the SPX uh, tilt ratio RSI gets around 30, that'd be quite a bit of information to suggest that area has support. And so that may be where the next buys are going to be generated. So uh, we'll see how all that works out. Uh, we got a couple of weeks to go. So, but the market upside has stalled. Um, so we're starting to build some sort of a high here. So anyhow, that's my evaluations on the um, SPY over the next couple of weeks. So we'll see how uh, that turns out. So let's get to the gold market. Absolutely. And, uh, oh, actually, nope. This is oh, this, still on the uh, yeah, SPY. Yeah. Uh, still on the market here as far as the equity market goes. And the only thing I want to show you here is the chart's a little bit messy. Uh, this chart goes back to 2007. And I have uh, green shaded areas on the chart. And the reason why I put that green shaded area is that's the times when the uh, NYSE summation index did get above 1,000 without going below minus 700 first. In other words, this sign of strength kind of came out of nowhere. Normally, you get a, you get a sign of weakness, which is a, uh, a reading below minus 700. Then it jumps to 1,000, and that's an indication that the market has made a major low. The, the shaded green areas are times where, where the summation just went to, without going below 700, just went above 1,000. So those kind of unique times when that happens, a lot of times they come about the midpoint of the move up. And uh, they never, they can come at minor highs, but never at major highs. So when it, the summation it gets to a plus 1,000, it, it basically is a sign of strength is what I'm trying to I point see. out and it's never the final high so we have a sign of strength this thing was triggered um, I forgot I think it was October 1st uh, yeah first part of October so just a couple of weeks ago we got it we're back down below a thousand right now but it did get a, a thousand so we have a sign of strength in the summation index so most likely we're probably 
you know, in my opinion, we, before the year's out, in my opinion, we probably got another 10% in the market to go higher here. So the market internals are, what I'm saying, is really strong. Even though we may have a consolidation here over the next couple three couple of weeks into the election, after that, the market's going to probably really uh, take off to the upside. Right. And this 1,000 summation index kind of reinforces that idea. So um, a little bit of patience over the next couple of weeks, but... Uh, higher highs are coming uh, probably after the election. So this chart kind of proves that point. So anyhow, um, fantastic. Yeah, higher and, highs are coming. So I just wanted to show that chart. And you were talking about too how you're gonna like you know determine if you're at a, at a high or something like that, right? Or if we're not right now. And again, I, I really do want to bring up right now. If you guys go over to the services tab on tfnn.com, you can get right here the secret signs of market tops with Tim Orton. Tim, at some point. We should do something on, on bottoming patterns and everything like that. But as it stands now, this is what we got for you guys if you want to learn a little bit more about what Tim is doing here and how he's looking at these charts. Uh, so, Tim, you want to move into gold because I know we have a lot of people who are uh, very interested to hear what you have to say on this. All right. Uh, actually, I only have a couple of charts here. Yeah. But uh, this uh, this is uh, chart number six. <coughs> and... Uh, um, been playing gold for a long time and, and tried a lot of different types of indicators, but this one seems to work really the best that I found. And I'm still looking for uh, adding more tools uh, because this is kind of a lifelong learning process that really how to figure out what works in the market. But anyhow, the bottom window is the 50 day average of the up down volume. Next higher window is 50-day average of the up-down or of, of advanced decline, but what seems to work the best is the up-down volume. Uh, this chart goes back to mid 2018, and what I found out when this indicator is above zero, uh, I just put, put this chart up. Uh, I don't know a couple of hours ago it was plus 17. It only has to stay above zero, and when it's above zero. The uptrend GDX is in force. So even on a short-term basis here, um, a lot of times this uh, GDX will start going, will actually go up, and this indicator will go down. That would be uh, uh, a sign that weakness is coming in GDX. Well, that's not happening here. GDX is pretty much setting at its recent high. It's actually setting at the 2000. 22 high and actually 2020 20 high up around around this 40 area and this indicator is staying solidly above zero mm -hmm. so i'm not there's not even on a short term basis here i'm not showing any weakness at all uh so uh will the market get stronger uh it actually could so a lot of times when you go up against previous highs which we're at right now. Again, we're at the 2022 high and the 2020 high up around this 40 area. We may actually see the market actually get stronger. And that's what's supposed to happen once you test up against the previous high. You want the market actually to build strength and it appears that's what's happening here. And to get through a previous high, it, what needs to happen is a sign of strength. So the market actually volume-wise and advanced decline wise and actually up down volume wise needs to increase here and that's peers of what's happening here so there may be on a short term basis here acceleration uh, through this 40 area so that's kind of what it appears to be happening right here. I don't see any signs of a top of any consequence because the market is <clears throat> actually making higher highs and higher lows actually going back since uh, April of this year and that's the definition of an uptrend so not seeing any weakness. I think the market appears to be getting a little bit stronger. So uh, we may see a, a, a push higher maybe going into the election here because uh, most candidates suggest that money supply will still be expanding here. And that's what's bullish for gold. Right. I hear the music. Yeah, Tim, stay right there. I know we have another chart to go over, uh, but stay right there. We'll finish it when we get back. Folks, we'll be right back with you. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I am joined by Tim Ward. If you're watching us on YouTube right now on Tiger Financial News Network and you haven't already, please go ahead and give this stream a thumbs up and give us a subscribe. It helps us out immensely and helps Tim out as well. Tim, we have we were on uh, the first GDX ADP chart and I know we have one more as well. I didn't know if you had any other kind of closing thoughts on uh, the first gold chart before we get to the last one. 
first one here. This is kind of a short-term uh, indicator. It doesn't try to uh, – I have real short-term indicators. This indicator kind of catches the trend pretty good. And right now that trend is up on a on – a, until it falls below zero. So it's not showing any signs of weakening on a short-term basis. So let's look at the bigger picture, yep. which is the last chart. And uh, this chart goes back to 2007. Let me get a drink here. Anyhow, it's a monthly chart. It looks at the bigger picture. And uh, it gets a signal. It usually stays on that signal for a year and a half at a minimum. And uh, some can last as long as four years. But uh, anyhow, the green areas are times. Uh, let's describe what we're looking at. The bottom window is the uh, cumulative up-down volume. Uh, for GDX on a monthly time frame. Next window higher is the cumulative advanced decline on a monthly time frame for GDX. And I put a Bollinger Band on both those indicators. And when the market is above the Bollinger Band, or, or both those indicators are above the Bollinger Bands, that's a buy signal and an uptrend in, in progress, uh, which is shaded green. And the pink areas are times when both indicators are below the mid Bollinger Band on the monthly time frame, it's a sell signal. So you can see what's kind of going on here. Last time a signal for this one was generated, the last time was 2021. It gave a sell signal. It looks like about January 2021. It stayed on a sell signal until uh, this year, I think it was April, when it triggered uh maybe April, May, I forgot which it was, but anyhow, earlier this year, he gave a buy signal as both indicators closed above the monthly mid-Bollinger Band, and as you can see where they are right now, they're way above the mid-Bollinger Band. It's not even close to showing any weakness here. Right. So, like I said, a year and a half, uh, so this will take us April of, say, that's when it's triggered April, so next April will be one year, add another six months to that, so the earliest possible top would come in October 2025 but it may be 2027 before that signal may be uh, negated I'll put it that way I see. also did some I don't have it shown but I did some cycle work and there's a cycle top due in 2027 so we may see this market go all possible all the way to 2027 that's not important right now only thing I know right now the major, we're on a major buy signal, and we expect that buy signal to last a minimum to October of, of 2025. So there'll be, be some consolidations along the way, but in general, uh, they'd be uh, compared to what we had over the last uh, since 2021, they may be pretty mild, relatively speaking. So uh, I noticed also on, uh, I think, the on yesterday's report, we showed the bullish percent index for the gold miners index, and the stocks, uh, 85, I think it was 82% of the stocks remain on buy signals. So there's a lot of gold stocks starting to move up, and uh, I think you're still actually early in the stages of this move up. So um, could be could be extremely rewarding uh, over the next year, year and a half or longer. Yeah, absolutely. So. And we've been following them here quite a bit. I know when Tom releases the gold report, you know, one of the one of the big ones he's always had um, has been definitely moving quite a bit. So it's, it's nice to see it. It's nice to see that there's still some pretty good bullish indications for the miners um, because it seems like the spot price is going to continue to go up as well. Um, we'll see what happens. Even with the slowdown in China, and I know this gets to more like, you know, fundamental stuff, but even the economic slowdown in China, you're still seeing a lot of them, you know, buy gold which is pretty nice so tim thank you yeah. so much for for joining me today i know we had a two days back to back but it's always good to have you on so all right we'll, we'll talk to you guys on next tuesday then sounds good so. we'll see you tuesday tim all right thank you take